Hello and welcome back. It's Riam and you are watching Dr. Riam Academy. In this video, we are talking about one of the amnesic fluid complications that might occur in pregnancy. So to know more, let's get in. Polyhydromnus is an abnormally increase of amniotic fluid. Now, hydromnus can be further categorized according to the degree into mild, moderate, and severe by using of amniotic fluid index measurements or deepest pocket measurement. If we use amniotic fluid index measurement, polyhydromnus considered mild if amniotic fluid index from 25 to less than 30 centimeters and moderate if amnetic fluid index measurement from 30 to less than 35, but severe hydromnus if the amnetic fluid index measurement is 35 cm or more. On the other hand, if we use the deepest pocket, we diagnose hydromnus as a mild degree if the measurement of the deepest pocket from 8 to less than 10 cm and defined as moderate hydromnus if it's from 10 to less than 12 cm. And finally, severe hydromnus if the deepest pocket measurement is 12 cm or more. And usually, severe hydromnus is more likely to have underlying etiology. Because the etiologies of hydromnus are so varied, hydromnus treatment also differs and is tailored in most cases to the underlying causes. Regarding to the causes of hydromnus, this includes diabetes, multifetal gestation, fetal anomalies, adiabatics, and other. There is findings support that maternal hyperglycemia cause fetal hyperglycemia with the resulting fetal osmotic diuresis into the amniotic fluid compartment which cause polyhydramnus. Another cause of polyhydramnus is multifetal gestation, and hydramnus is defined in multifetal gestations as a single deepest pocket measuring 8 cm or more. In addition, hydramnus in multifetal gestation may be unilateral in one sac as in twin-twin transfusion syndrome, or severe, and here you should suspect congenital anomaly. Now, the idiopathic polyhydramnus accounts for up to 70% of cases of hydramnus and it is identified in about 1% of pregnancies. The gestational age at the sonographic detection usually lies between 32 and 35 weeks. Another underlying causes of hydramnus is fatal anomalies, either structural or genetic syndromes. Examples of this are Anomalies in the central nervous system, such as encephaly or hydrocephaly, facial anomalies such as cleft lip or cleft palate, uh, thoracic or cardiac anomalies such as diaphragmatic hernia, tetralogy of fallot or epistein anomaly, in addition to GIT anomalies such as didinal or esophageal atresia. Now, complications of polyhydramnus occur with severe and acute polyhydramnus. Two types of complications noticed with polyhydramnus. Complications related to the pressure, like respiratory comp compromise, which manifested by dyspnea or topnea or edema of the lower limb and vulva. On the other hand, there are complications associated with polyhydramnus. The first complication is abrupt placenta, which is premature separation of placenta. Fortunately, it occurs infrequently. It may result from rupture of membrane and occasionally occurs days or weeks after amenorexia. In addition, postpartum hemorrhage and dysfunctional labor are complications of polyhydramnus, in which the overdistended uterus lead to abnormal muscle contraction and might lead to antonia. The most common outcomes with hydromnus include pert weight more than 4 kg in nearly 25% of cases. The second one, caesarean delivery weight is raised and reach up to 25 up to 50%. And importantly, 
perinatal mortality, which is raised if there is compound effect of hydramnus and IUGR and trisomy. The treatment of hadromnus is directed to the underlying cause and to relieve the pressure symptoms by amniodiction. The indications of amniodiction are in case of severe hadromnus which result in respiratory compromise or result in preterm labor. Regarding to the technique of amniodiction the needle used is large needle with 80 to 20 gig. The amount of fluid withdrawal is 1000 to 2000 milliliter. And this should be done over 20 to 30 minutes. And the frequency of doing it, it is usually, it usually done weekly or semi-weekly. Finally, the complications that might be occur in the next 48 hours are deliver in 4% of cases, and rupture of membrane in 1% of cases. Thank you very much for your time. If anybody there has a question, you can write it in the comment below. Please include your school on the level of education. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the like button. I will see you next time. Bye.